Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I am an urban gardener growing on about 154 square feet of dead space in my backyard. That does not include the bags and it does not include the orchard. So tonight I have some things I can harvest. I have been away from my garden since Sunday night and it is now Wednesday. I am back and there are some things that have changed, yay! Um, so I'm gonna do like a mini garden tour to show you the things that have changed and then I'm also going to work on harvesting some things. There are some beans that can be harvested. I'm also gonna harvest the potatoes that I had planted back in, I think, February. So I've been pulling off of them for probably a month now. So we'll see what's left in the bag. Um, I planted a second wave of potatoes a little while ago. I planted a third wave about three weeks ago. I mean, t no, it was not. It was like a week ago, week and a half or so ago. Um, I planted a third wave of potatoes. Once I clear these bags, I'm also gonna plant potatoes in there again. Um, so kind of a continuous harvest of potatoes. And by the end of the year, fall, I should have a decent amount of potatoes from my little backyard. Okay, so I also have to water tonight. There has been some rain, which was a plus uh, because I didn't know if I could count on my children to actually water my garden. I'm gonna fertilize the squash and the zucchini with some fish emulsion uh, because they were not in when the rest of the zucchini were in. So they are looking a little less green than the rest of the zucchini. So I'm gonna do that for them. Um, and then the rest of the garden is gonna get a balanced fertilizer. Um, and so I had picked up some Neptune's Harvest. I will say the tomatoes that I fertilized with the Agro Thrive have a lot more flowers on them now. So I will show you that. But I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these potatoes, whatever is left in the bag. I'm gonna turn around and put some more compost into this bag, and then I'm going to plant out more potato, more potatoes in this bag. And that's after harvesting quite a few new potatoes. So, not the biggest but decent size potatoes. I keep the small ones too, because I'll make mashed potatoes with the skin on. And so they'll still be useful. So those are the potatoes I got. Um, there were three different harvests on these bags. Um, and then, you know, I actually had five bags. I harvested three of the other bags. I think I had maybe six. Anyway, I harvested three or four of them, like the full bag a few weeks ago because I wanted the potatoes. This is a great thing to do in a small section. It's called succession sowing. So you sow one crop, then you sow another crop, and you continue to sow. Um, this will probably be my last crop sowing for the summer, and they won't be ready until fall. But we planted potatoes together uh, a little while ago, and so those should be ready sometime throughout the summer. Um, I, I kind of dug down a little bit, and they are growing, so super excited. They are in a no-dig bed, or, and I've never grown potatoes in a no-dig. Uh, so that should be exciting to see what I what kind of harvest I get out of those um, So I'm just gonna quickly show you what I plan to do to kind of refresh these bags potatoes like soil That's full of organic matter And so I have compost that I sifted when I did my strawberries, which I have to show you all my strawberries um, I was away should have thought that through some of them are still alive some of them are not but I will show you uh, but potatoes like a bag with a lot of organic matter so I'm gonna pour that extra compost in here mix it into um, the soil a little bit and then I'm going to replant potatoes in this bag so 
This is my compost. Since I make my own compost, store what I have left over once I sift um, in a bag from a store. So I have my potatoes and so they have sprouted and I am trying something new with this set. The four bags that are over here, I did the same thing. I'm only gonna cut one piece off and only gonna put one in the bag. I want to see if it uh, changes my amount of harvest because each one of these sprouts are going to create a plant. And so I wanna see if, if um, I'll get a better harvest just doing one and having one plant in the seven um, gallon bag. Either way, I get a decent amount of uh, potatoes, but I just wanna see if, that, if it makes a difference. I'm gonna do a good amount of compost because these bags have already done some work this season. All right, so we have our bag. And all I'm gonna do is take this one little piece and put it down in the bag. I'm gonna dig a hole down in the bag in the middle. And I'm just gonna plop it down in there and cover it up. I'm also gonna go ahead and put my straw back over it. They, it will come through the straw. I water the rest of the garden. I'll water these in as well. And that's that, harvest and replant. So right here are the other four bags of potatoes where I just stuck one small piece down in there um, and they are starting to come up. So, and you're getting more than one sprout. So that is a plus. Um, so I'm hoping that by giving them more room i may get more potatoes and larger potatoes so that's what i'm going to check and see with this last group of potatoes my last onion has flopped over on me and so i'm um, gonna go ahead and harvest that too it was a decent size so what it kind of taught me is that perhaps my onions were too close together uh, because the ones that fell over um, earlier were a little bit smaller um, and this one got bigger so next year i will plant them a little bit further apart so that i can get a larger bulb what i've done here is you can see things sprouting that is swiss chard but as they grow i'm going to separate them and put them in this space so this whole front space will be swiss chard because i was out of the area and i wasn't able to keep my lettuce uh, moist it had started coming up in the front, but it has died back. So I am, uh, I, I may put more out, but right now there, there is no lettuce in. My little pest ridden green beans have green beans on them now that are ready to harvest. And I am excited because I absolutely love green beans. Also, I don't know if anybody remembers, I was saying, I'm trying to angle my camera. Anybody remembers I was saying that like, the last set of green beans were gonna get shaded and they probably weren't gonna grow. That is not true. The last set of green beans are the same height as these green beans now. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and plant another row of green beans tonight on this side and another row of green beans on the other side. I had put rutabaga in um, closer to the back of the space that was left in this, gar this bed over here. So I'm gonna leave those. I am gonna go ahead and get another succession of green beans in this bed because I was incorrect. <laughs> With green beans, um, especially indeterminate, well, not indeterminate, pole beans, the more you harvest, the more you get. So if you are growing pole beans, make sure you just keep harvesting them so that you can get a good amount of green beans. Potato has to be from my first year garden, uh, volunteered in this bed. <laughs> and so I'm just letting it grow. Don't know how much of a harvest I'm gonna get from it, but any harvest is a good harvest, right? I need to pull this spinach. It bolted a long time ago. That's what this is, it's spinach. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and pull these calendula too. They're very good for your skin, like you can make salves and things out of them. I've been trying to make sure that I pull them and deadhead them. Deadheading just means pulling off the ones that are dying 
so you should probably pull them before they die but i wasn't here so i didn't get to do that and i also have some calendula over here i'm gonna go ahead and harvest too um i'm sorry chamomile i also have some chamomile over here that i'm getting ready to harvest too so that i could save that for tea so the oregano is back again uh so i'm gonna go ahead and harvest that i cut back the comfrey too because look at that but i cut that back and i put it directly into the pepper bags uh to give them a little more nutrients so this this oregano is back and so is the other one <laughs> i think i was mentioning earlier like if you're in a small space just harvest your stuff and keep harvesting it uh, because you will realize by the end of the season you will have stocked up quite a bit of of food where it looked like your harvest was kind of small so that is what i am working diligently on this year there's a little uh blackberry back here but this oregano is saying absolutely not which you know blackberries will take over too <laughs> but this is what i wanted this section to kind of be just a big overgrown mess but also i want to harvest it so that i can use it i've harvested oregano a bunch of times you've probably been with me most of those times <laughs> When I got home, all of the flowers that were in the house were dead. And um, I think I broke that, I did. My echinacea flower. Well, it was gonna be a flower, I broke it when I dropped down. Uh, they were dead, so I was not expected to see all of this. So to this week's flower will be uh, teddy bear sunflowers. So in this bed, my radishes are going to seed I'm gonna leave them because people always talk about the tasty radish pods. I'm gonna leave them because I want to taste them. Also, they look like they're being somewhat of a trap uh, crop. So they're getting eaten up, but nothing else in this bed is getting eaten up. So I'm gonna leave them. The nasturtiums in this bed have also started to flower. They're beautiful. Not sure that I didn't get a vining variety. <laughs> and I'll show you on another plant why I say that. They're still beautiful. Look at that one. There's three on one. It's pretty cool. Decent amount of sunflowers to go in the house and I may take some to work for my desk. Oh my God, did you guys see how pretty that was? Oh, it was so pretty. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. It's down on one of the other sunflowers, but it was very pretty. So I'm gonna take these in the house. I'm also probably gonna grab some daisies. Although the daisies that are in the house now, they're still alive. So I may not grab any more daisies. They seem to be living just fine. So I might, I might not. They're also um, all over the place. If I, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like they, I, I've been harvesting them and using them in the house because those are some big plants, the Shasta daisy. In case you are planning to plant it, they're huge and they're perennial. So they're just gonna keep coming back. <laughs> Okay, so let's get off this tripod so we can talk about the new things that's happening in the garden. So the first thing I noticed when I came home and the first thing I was very excited about is that my pole beans are starting to grow. Once your pole beans start to grow, you are guaranteed to have a green bean harvest pretty much probably like every three days um, until the plant kind of dies out on its own. I am probably going to replant these close to, let's say maybe sometime in August. The plant will probably be done, like spent, don't want no more. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. But I was very excited to see the, also look at this amaranth. When I left, there was like this little portion of this. It's the time of year, cause someone else said it in the comments where uh, you know, a day or two can produce something that you didn't see the day before. Um, and so this amaranth is growing and I am very excited. It's very pretty. Um, I am going to attempt to use that for grain this year and we'll see what happens. Down here, I've never had a whole line of tomatoes before. And I'm so excited about that. This is the sun peach and they were very delicious the hollyhocks oh my gosh 
How beautiful. If you don't grow hollyhocks, you should give it a try. They are some of the most beautiful flowers and they are perennial. Um, I know they are in zone seven. I'm not sure on the in the zones that's lower than mine if they are perennial, but uh, they're beautiful and they come back every year. Oh, totally forgot to show y'all that sunflower. Where is it? Very pretty sunflower. My daughter wants to eat it. So we're gonna try it. We have a few of them. Um, I gotta get up there though. <laughs> so I wanted to show you some of the slicing tomatoes are coming up. I'm excited about those. I like fried green tomatoes. I won't do it super early uh, because I wanna be able to get an actual harvest of tomatoes. Those potatoes, I had to heal them because the potatoes were coming up a little bit. Let me see if I can show you the potatoes. And also, 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 I never covered my blueberries. Almost all of my blueberries are gone. The birds enjoy them. <laughs> so don't be too hard on yourself if you forget something because I have I said from the start of this season, I am covering my blueberries. I do not want the birds to eat them. The birds ate them. <laughs> so these are the potatoes that we planted together. And right there, you can see I got a potato and it is a very decent sized potato. Um, so I'm excited about that. We have this nasturtium, which is why I said I believe some of my varieties are trailing, but it is beautiful and it is like kicking out nasturtiums for me. Um, and they are edible, uh, like the flowers are edible, the leaves are edible. I put the leaves in, in um, salads and the leaves are edible, so they're delicious. Uh, we have an eggplant starting to grow. Let me see if I can find it right there. And there's probably more, but I didn't take the time to like really check on all of them. Uh, when I left, there were no Amish paste tomatoes. When I returned, here we go. So really excited about that because I am hoping to make lots of sauce and lots of salsa and that kind of stuff. Look at this sunflower. It's so beautiful. I may cut some of those for inside um, as well. I still don't have any cucumbers just yet uh, because I put them out much later than um, the rest of the things in the garden. And I would imagine these are super dry. They have a very nice uh, view of the sun. <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure I water them. There's some more sunflowers up there and they are beautiful. Um, so, you know, I showed you all the squash the other day. Look at that thing. It's even getting its, um, I guess, design. <laughs> it's not design, but uh, here's another another one. This is, not really sure what that is. I will have to look it up and I'll put it, um, I'll put the name of it on the screen, but I hand pollinated this. Um, must have been Sunday morning and my daughter, I think, was like, go look at the squash. So I got one of those finally. Um, and then the other two that I showed you are still going strong. There's one down there. And so I'll start hand pollinating. I'm not really sure why it doesn't seem like the bees are doing it because they're here all the time. Look at these pretty nasturtiums. They're beautiful. I think they're beautiful. <laughs> oh, look at the Trombocino squash. It is almost doubled in size. And I have another one that got, uh, oh, squash bugs. And they're making babies. <laughs> gotta go get them, gotta go get them. <laughs> Where are they? Do you see them? Those are squash bugs. You do not want them in your garden. Got one. Definitely ruined their day. <laughs> But um, it's got to be done. And looky here. I knew they would be coming. I knew they would be coming soon. It's what they do. So make sure you check your plants if you want to have some squash. Oh, that's the other Trombocino squash that has, has gotten pollinated. So I should have another nice size Trombocino squash coming in. Um, and so you see the flowers all over here. This is where I did the uh, Agro Thrive. Um, and so there are more flowers coming. I'm excited. Um, oh, also, these are a paste tomato. I had none when I left. I have some now. And I have flowers. So 
I'm excited about that. I am gonna have to get out here and check for these squash bugs. Like, oh my God. Once you start seeing the, once you start seeing the eggs being laid, you have gotta be diligent in checking your, your leaves and just checking for them in general, honestly. There are more peppers growing too. These are banana peppers. I only had one banana pepper plant. Um, and so it's growing really good. Over here, we got some jalapenos making their way into the world. I did not snip my peppers this year or top them or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Cause my peppers were kind of small last year. So I'm trying to see if I just let them grow the way that they were. The plants were small and the peppers were kind of small. Uh, those are Hungarian wax peppers right there. And I showed you the shishito peppers down here. And Jimmy Nardello is growing um, down this way. Also, I think I saw some, uh, yep. These are the uh, long cayenne. So they're growing too. There's two long cayenne peppers, I think. So the garden is finally starting to take off and I could not be more excited. My uh, tomato plants, over here have already reached the top of the trellis so i am not sure what i'm gonna do there uh to let them keep growing we haven't even gotten to the summer yet so that's kind of a problem <laughs> i'm gonna water and fertilize i'm gonna water first because i'm sure the soil is a bit dry at the top so i want to water first let that soak in and then fertilize that way the fertilizer isn't going through the soil so that's one thing that you may want to think about when you are fertilizing. So thank you all for watching. I hope that you've had a wonderful week so far. I am going back to work tomorrow. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Um, and don't forget to visit me over on Instagram at Miss MS Asia Spratly on Instagram where I post about the garden pretty much every day of the week. Thank you very much. Bye.